We know that managing diabetes can be difficult. It's not always easy to know what things you can or cannot do and how certain things will impact your diabetes. And it can become very frustrating. Well, on today's video, guys, I want to teach you all the diabetes hacks that I've learned or from my own experience from wearing the continuous glucose monitor and also from treating patients on a daily basis and seeing what things work for them and what they can do to make managing diabetes easier. So guys, welcome to the Voice of Diabetes. My name is Diana Butucci, and today I want to make your life easier by telling you all the hacks that you need to know in order to manage your diabetes better. Make sure you tune in all the way to the end because I have great diabetes tips that everyone needs to know that I'll discuss later on in the video. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any uploads that I upload here on a weekly basis. So not too long ago, I wore the continuous glucose monitor. I actually wore the Dexcom for 10 days and I learned a lot. I was able to learn a lot of things that I was mind blown by and I wanna share a lot of those tips that I learned for myself with all of you. Um, so let's get started. Number one is physical activity and regular exercise. When I wore the Dexcom, I was so surprised to see the impact that exercise has on my blood sugar readings. I work out five days a week, one hour every single day. I wake up at 4.30, I'm at the gym by five in the morning. That way I can finish my workout before work. So on those days, I noticed that my blood sugar levels were actually roughly 10 points lower on a regular basis. On the weekends when I don't work out, my blood sugars tended to stay higher. So I learned the importance of exercise obviously on my own body because what exercise does it improves insulin sensitivity so we're able to use the insulin more wisely and better and also decreases insulin resistance again it makes the utilization of insulin much better and obviously and it also reduces the insulin resistance that happens naturally within our body especially when we are diabetic we know that insulin resistance is much higher so um guys we got to get moving we got to stay active make sure you're doing everything that you can you know 15 minute walk 20 minute walks whatever it is those are all very good exercises i do want to point out though that after a very intense workout such as you know sprinting would be an intense workout your sugar levels can actually spike after the workout or during the workout so you can expect to see higher blood sugar levels initially but for the remaining of the day your blood sugar levels will be lower uh, staying hydrated guys is also very important because we know that when we are not hydrating our glu glucose can become more concentrated and as a result our blood sugar levels can go higher with the kidneys also need water for filtering out the glucose if we're not giving the kidneys enough water they can't really process the glucose and get rid of it as quickly or as much as they would when we hydrate therefore we will tend to see higher blood sugar levels when we are dehydrated so remember the importance of drinking water it can never be overemphasized especially with diabetics but also for non-diabetics avoiding stress is huge so um, guys it's crazy because normally my blood sugar levels will be around 80 before work and as my morning continued the stress of you know managing diabetes the stress of dealing with different patients and trying to troubleshoot their problems obviously by the time my morning was done and lunchtime came around my blood sugars were up in the 100s uh, 110 even as high as 120 and that is only because of stress and obviously i know that, that i can't control that kind of stress because obviously i have to work and i have to manage patients i can't control patient situations so of course I can't avoid work stress because that's stress that uh, that's unavoidable. You can't avoid someone you cutting you off in traffic. We know that those are unavoidable stressors. But of course, trying to manage pinpoint things that might stress you. Um, if there's someone in your life that constantly irritates you, um, if there are things that really cause stress in your life, trying to eliminate those are is crucial. Um, you know, going for a nice walk, clearing out your thoughts, and just trying to keep things status quo. That's obviously always encouraged because we know stress will have a negative effect on your blood sugar levels, but of course, blood pressure and much more. But, um, you know, specifically speaking to blood sugars, 
they do tend to increase blood sugar levels. Taking your medications as directed, guys, that cannot be overemphasized. You want to make sure you're taking your insulins the proper way. You want to make sure you're taking, you know, whatever medications that you're on the way that you were directed to take them. Now, some of the medications might be on an empty stomach, like Rebelsis, um, which is a newer medication, a GLP-1 that came out. But obviously, there's a reason why that has to be taken in the morning with a four ounce glass of water. Whatever the instructions are, you want to make sure that you're taking your medications regularly because we know that that's how they will work is when we take them regularly. If we're skipping them, obviously, we're causing highs and we're not the therapeutic level that we should with medications if we're irregular and we're missing them. So medication compliance cannot be overemphasized guys unfortunately that is still one of the major problems we have with our patients is compliance that they don't take their medications the way they should as a result obviously we have issues with managing their blood sugar levels testing blood sugars guys is another one you want to make sure that you're testing your blood sugars the way that you've been directed to uh, because that's really the only way you're not going to know how your blood sugar levels are doing or how your diabetes is being managed if you're not testing your blood sugars so that that's why it's very crucial to um, you know to test them regularly and luckily for us you know in this generation we have continuous glucose monitors like the Freestyle Libre and the Dexcom that we can utilize. And of course, those are making life much easier, not having to prick your fingers all the time. Reading nutrition labels, I cannot overemphasize this and I will upload and I will link the videos that you should watch that really go into further depth, but you have to become educated and you have to learn how to read nutrition labels as a diabetic because you want to make sure that you're looking for lower uh, grams of carbohydrates, higher protein, higher fiber. Fiber is so crucial for our digestive system and we know that fiber helps lower glucose levels after we eat because they tend to make us feel more full, they slow our digestion and there's so many benefits of fiber so make sure you guys check out the video right above um, on fiber where I go further into detail about the importance of fiber and diabetes but of course not only is it good for diabetes but it's also good for maintaining and keeping our heart healthy and we know that diabetics are at higher risk for heart disease and non-diabetics so of course you want to get educated and you want to be smart about reading nutrition labels right and you know looking at the total grams of carbs another one guys is snacking you want to be a wise snacker because that can actually get us into a lot of trouble sometimes patients will eat very good meals but then they will snack and that's when we find out that's why their a1c's are not well controlled and their blood sugars are spiking you want to make sure that you're having good snacks around the house high protein high fiber and low carbohydrate snacks around the house for me there's certain snacks that i just cannot keep my hands off and I have to literally, I just get rid of them and I don't have them in the house. And therefore, if they're not available to me, I can't, I'm not going to get up at, you know, 8.30 p.m. and go grab it at the store. So I'm more likely to make wiser choices and grab something that's much healthier. So really, guys, you want to avoid things, obviously, that you know are not good for you. You'd rather have a banana, guys, than a cookie um, because we know bananas can be very high in carbohydrates. And obviously, a cookie is all sugar, so that's going to be high in carbohydrates. But you're getting so much more uh, nutritious and so much more minerals, vitamins from the, the banana. There's so much more fiber and protein versus having a cookie, which is going to have absolutely no nutritional benefit for you. It's going to be plain, just all sugar. So you want to be wise. And I'm not saying go eat four bananas a day. Absolutely not, because bananas are high in sugar as well. But when you have to choose in between the two, I'd rather have you choose something that has the same amount of sugar, but is much more valuable and much better for your for your health and your blood sugars than going for cookies so you'd rather have bananas at the house in other words than have cookies available at the house when you need that snack um, that will be a better option and of course moderation or splitting in half with your partner or a family member that is also encouraged with fruits because fruits can be high in sugar and they can cause high blood sugar levels before we move on to the last two um, another really good advice i can give you is pre-planning 
So you want to make sure that you're planning your meals out accordingly. Diabetics normally will not eat, you know, on the go. They try to really plan out their day. They want to take their medications or if they're on insulin, they will take the insulin before they eat the way that they were instructed to do so. So you want to make sure you kind of have an idea of how your day is going to go. So that way you can make wiser decisions and you can have the things that you need available. The last one, guys, is reaching out to companies if you are unable to afford medications because believe it or not a lot of these big companies like Novo Nordisk or Lilly which pretty much produce most of the diabetic medications that we use today they're responsible for all, most of the insulins we use and newer ones especially Ozempic, Trulicity all the newer and the greater medications really come from these bigger companies so you can reach out to them because have patient assistant programs and I have a lot of my patients using Lily Cares program and, and the Nova Nordisk patient assistance program and literally it's you fill out a form and I believe you have to um, you know reveal your income they send it to us we sign the paperwork on the medications that you're taking the dosages and if you meet the requirements and the requirements are not that strict it's not they, they don't expect you to make nothing to qualify but so many of my patients are using these assistance program and they're getting these medications for absolutely zero dollars. So I want you to be mindful that if you're struggling to get medications, you can contact these companies and say, hey, do you have an, a patient assistant program? And most of them actually do. And you can apply and see if you qualify. And this is, you know, so many patients are taking advantage of this and it has been working really well for my patients. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there are other diabetes hacks, make sure you comment below and let us know. And I will see you guys all next time. Take care.